The 2023 NBA Draft has concluded, and Asar Thompson is a Detroit Piston. He was the selection at number five. We're going to talk about this pick and the Pistons trading up to get another first-round pick in today's episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. You are Locked On Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's the deal? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. Per usual, I'm your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. And if you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Later on in the podcast, we'll talk about the Pistons trading up into the first round and getting another rookie in this draft. And then, lastly, in the podcast, I just want to give my overall draft uh, reactions because there were some interesting things that happened uh, and some things I thought maybe the Pistons might try to capitalize on. We'll talk about that a little later. But man, first. You guys can't hear me. Those of you guys listening on, or watching on the podcast, you guys can, or on YouTube, you guys can see it. Those of you guys on podcast platforms can't see it, but I'm rubbing my hands together. Because I tried telling y'all. I was on the Sar Thompson train for weeks, for weeks and weeks. Ever since the lottery, I was a Sar Thompson guy. I've been trying to tell y'all that Sar Thompson is him. Sar Thompson is him. And before this past week, we weren't hearing. Asar Thompson is this big favorite to go to the Pistons. We weren't hearing that the Pistons were too incredibly interested in Asar Thompson before this past week. But then this past week happened. All, all of a sudden, everyone jumped on the Asar Thompson bandwagon. But your guy right here had been telling you for a month that Asar Thompson should be the pick. I had him and Jairus at the top. Him and Jairus Walker at the top for a while. I've been saying it. Asar Thompson is him. And the Pistons went out and selected Asar. So first, I, just, I have to say this. I... And so I'm extremely excited for the Sar man. I, I think he was, I, like I said, I think he was the right pick. I had been saying that I think he should have been the pick at five. I, I'm I'm really excited to have him on the squad. I, I'm like when they said his name yesterday, I was I, I was definitely pretty pretty happy with it, man. Sar is going to join the team. He's going to instantly bring a, a a type of athleticism that the Pistons have not had in the wing. And God knows how long. I, I, I can't I can't even think of the last time the Pistons had this type of athleticism on the wing. He's going to bring, I think, pretty impactful defense on the wing. Even though most rookies are not great on defense, most of them always are at least bad probably on defense. Uh, the Pistons' wing room was so horrific defensively this past season and just la- lacked any type of athleticism that Asar's just raw defensive ability and his raw athleticism, I think, will be seen as an immediate impact for the Pistons. And then offensively, high feel. High, I think he's going to be a really good playmaker, really good off-ball player, great cutter, great in transition, and I believe in the jump shot. Troy Weaver spent the entirety of... The entirety of his draft presser after the picks last night. Now, he wasn't able to talk about Sasser yesterday. I don't know if he's going to be able to talk about Sasser today. I know today they're going to have um, – int- I think today is the introductory press conference. But um, I don't think they'll be able to talk about Sasser yet because I don't think the trade actually is finalized. So I don't know if he's going to be allowed to. But he spent the entirety of his presser last night absolutely raving about Arsara Thompson – and talking about how big his how, how high his ceiling is for this team. He went out of the way and said that he thinks he can be like Andre Iguodala was on the Philadelphia 76ers. And for those of you guys who are younger NBA fans, younger Pistons fans, you guys may not remember or even have been alive when you uh, Andre Iguodala was playing for the Philadelphia 76ers. But Andre Iguodala, he wasn't always this old man who rolled the bench and basically was a uh, or, or assistant coach for the Golden State Warriors. That wasn't what he always was. Andre Iguodala was once an all-star type of player, was once a, once a 18 to 20 point per game score while bringing great defense and also bringing great playmaking, a very smart, athletic, crazy athlete type of player. 
that that's the kind of guy that that Andre Iguodala was. Honestly, he was probably a little ahead of his time. Probably would have been even more appreciated if he played his prime in this era of basketball. But nonetheless, that's who Weaver was comparing Asar Thompson to, and he talked about how he felt like that his outside shot is better than the numbers suggest. It will be better than the numbers had suggested last season. Weaver w- looked over the moon with this pick of Asar Thompson, and I joined him, man. I I, I think he was by far the pick here. Asar is just, he was by far the biggest swing, I feel like. They said that they wanted to take a home run swing. They said they wanted to go for the fences. And I think Asar Thompson is definitely the one that you go for the fences with. If he develops, if that jump shot continues to develop and he improves in some of his handle going down uh, downhill, his handle when it comes to creating his own space on a jumper or, or some shots is actually pretty good. But getting downhill still needs some work. So if he can improve his handle getting downhill, and I really love this. I really love that Weaver said this about him too in, in the press yesterday. If he can improve just like his footwork and, 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 and like some of the nuances on defense at the NBA level, he should be an instant, like really good defender. Because that was that, that's probably Asar's biggest thing on defense right now is that he he has been able to uh, rely on just his athleticism and his raw defensive feel to really make impact plays defensively where his footwork hasn't been exactly the best and he doesn't really... He probably doesn't understand the nuances like Weaver said at the NBA level of like different schemes and where to be at and stuff like that. So once he gets once he gets into training camp and really starts to learn those things, he should be an instant impactful defender for the Pistons. And I really believe in his offense. And last thing I'll say with this pick, man, I, I'm seriously so excited for this pick, dude. I I, I I this is who I've wanted for for a very long time. I'm so happy they got Osar. But Weaver. And Asar Thompson said after the draft something that I was just over the moon. Second time we're going to say it. Third time, actually, right here. Over the moon with this quote. Because I swear to God, if you guys have been listening to the podcast for the last few weeks, it feels like they just listened to the podcast, took my quotes, and said, here you go, this is what we're going to say. Weaver and Asar both said that they feel like the NBA is moving towards multiple playmakers on the floor. Having multiple guys who can break someone down, get to the rim, make the right read. Multiple guys that can attack closeouts and make a read. Multiple guys who are playmakers. Multiple guys that are ball handlers on your team, on the floor. That's what this team is trying to build towards. And that's what they think the NBA is moving towards. Asar said it first in his interview, which I thought was incredibly smart and a great insightful answer from Asar Thompson. I absolutely loved hearing that from him. Shows how smart of a kid he is. And then Weaver himself went out there and said that's how he felt. Things were things are going in the NBA. He went and brought up the Golden State Warriors. He said the Golden State Warriors, people would call the Andre Godala at four lineup the death lineup. And the reason why it was the death lineup is because you had Clay, you had Steph, Clay, Draymond, uh, Iggy, and another guy on the floor, all of them who are able of tacking a closeout and ta- uh, and are capable of making the right read and the right pass. That's what made, and I don't believe that's the only thing that made a death lineup. But it definitely was one of the things. And I've already brought up the multiple teams that are doing this in the NBA. The Denver Nuggets. We brought up how they have Aaron Gordon playing the five sometimes. They will, they'll will they run lines with Aaron Gordon, Jamal Murray, Bruce Brown. Um, and sometimes they'll run it with Nikola Jokic. That's four guys that can tackle close up. Four guys that can make plays for others and themselves. You go to the Boston Celtics. You got Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Al Horford, Marcus Smart, and Derek White. All five guys who are capable of making the right pass. Good playmakers and attacking close up making the right read. We can go on and on and on and on throughout the contenders in the NBA that have multiple guys that can break down a defense and get to the rim and make the right read. The Miami Heat... They had Gabe Vincent, Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, and sometimes Kyle Lowry, they would play with him. That's four guys. We can just keep going and keep going. So the fact that Weaver said that and Asar said that immediately in their pre- in, in their like presser after the draft, I was just sitting there just, I was like, man, I got the Asar Thompson pick right. I got the pick that I wanted. I got the player I wanted. And then right after they pick him, they give the exact explanation of why he needs to be the right pick and what they're building for, what the Pistons have a chance to build towards with Cade, Ivy, Asar, and Duran in the lineup together, all guys who will be plus playmakers. They bring that up just like I've been the last few weeks. Man, I felt like I was like, man, I felt like I, I was in the front office. I felt like I, that they had they had 
came to the house and hired me as a front office member. I'm not going to lie. I felt pretty good last night. I'm still feeling pretty good right now. But look, I absolutely love the Cesar Thompson pick. I think he's going to be great with the Pistons, man. I, I can't wait. I can't wait to watch him in. I can't wait to watch him in. In summer league, I can't wait to hear about him in training camp. I can't wait to watch him in preseason. I definitely can't wait to watch him in regular season, man. It's going to be I, – I, I can't wait for this. I can't wait. So let me know what you guys think about the Asar Thompson pick and some of the things maybe you heard after from Weaver or Asar. Let me know that in the comment section down below. But first – um, but not, not but first. I got ahead of myself. When we come back, we're going to talk about the pick the Pistons ended up trading up for. They ended up getting Marcus Sasser – at the 25th overall pick, we'll talk about what they gave up to get him and also what this means moving forward with Asar and Sasser both being the picks on this draft night before free agency. We'll talk about that a little bit when we come back. But first, I've got to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs make you feel and look good. Bird Dog stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg and give you a truly sculpted look. Bird Dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but fit way better. They fit way better than regular shorts that are made of stiff, restricting cotton. Bird Dogs fix this issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khakis, but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Bird Dogs uses anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. Go to BirdDogs.com so that's locked on NBA for a free Yeti style tumbler with whatever order. I'm telling you, Bird Dogs not only makes you feel good, it will make you look good. They're extremely comfortable. It's the best thing on the market. I suggest you guys go check them out. I'm telling you, you guys will not regret it. Feels amazing. You will look amazing. Definitely go check it out at BirdDogs.com. Also, if you use code Locked on NBA, you'll get a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. Again, go to BirdDogs.com slash Locked on NBA for a free Yeti style tumbler with whatever order you won't want to take your Bird Dogs off. We promise you. Again, head to BirdDogs.com slash Locked on NBA for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order with Bird Dogs. So I want to thank you guys again for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons, hit that subscribe button, or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. Um, the Pistons ended up trading their 31st pick and multiple second-round picks. I, I don't think we know the exact amount of second-round picks right now. I believe... I, you know what? I don't think they gave us the exact number yet of how many second round picks, but they traded 31 and a few second round picks to move up to 25 and then select Marcus Sasser. So I don't know enough about Marcus Sasser to go into a full in-depth explanation about him or a real scouting report about him. I definitely will watch more and read more about him today. And I'll probably try to have someone on the podcast next week to talk about obviously Asar, but also Marcus Sasser, because I have a good grasp, a really good grasp on Asar, and I can talk about Asar for days. I'm not going to say and act like I know everything about Marcus Sasser as of right now. I need to read up on him. I need to watch more of him. I need to talk to some people, and I'd like to hear from some experts on this uh, first. I'm going to try to get some on the podcast. But what I know about Marcus Sasser from, the, from just when he got drafted, some of the things I've seen people talk about, some of the things I've read so far, a 6'2 combo guard, um, a guy that can play – uh, the point and the and the off guard position, uh, a really really good shooter, fantastic catch and shooter. I believe I saw he shot 42 percent on catch and shoot attempts in college. Great off ball shooter and an absolute dog point of attack defensively. So it makes sense why they went and got him because I know that defense. This is something Weaver talked about after the draft again, and he wasn't able to bring up uh, Sasser yet, but the Pistons wanted to improve their defense desperately this offseason. If you guys remember last offseason, I said, let's sacrifice some defense for some offense. I'm tired of not having a fun offense to watch. I'm tired of not scoring the basketball. Let's sacrifice some defense for some offense. And then we watched the last season play out. And I believe the first podcast of the offseason, I came on here and said, I apologize for ever suggesting something like that. I would rather watch a bad offense than watch why I just had to watch on defense all year. Don't do this again to me. Don't make us watch this. So, it was clear, I felt like, from the front office perspective, from 
you know, a lot of people who watched this past season, that defense probably was going to be the number one priority over shooting, over spacing, you know, over, you know, whatever offensively. Defense was going to be the main thing. And one of the things the Pistons have been lacking is a real great point of attack defender. And hopefully a star can fill that for them on defense on the wing. Um, maybe not this year, but moving at some point moving forward. And then Sasser, who is an older prospect, he's 22 years old. He's not someone who needs to grow into things. He's, he seems like an NBA-ready kind of guy. He's an older prospect. He can come off the bench and immediately be that point of attack defender, that dog on defense, and then play off-ball offensively and be a really good spacer. I think that's the idea that they have for him. And I understand the pick because I think he fills a need, two needs really, that the Pistons had in one pick. So I'm interested to watch him in summer league as well. Um, I'm interested to see what they do now in free agency and what they do throughout the rest of the offseason. Because it's going it's, it's going to be extremely interesting. Because I don't know what they're going to do. So I've heard, I've heard, I've listened to, I've tried to listen to some people in the last 24 hours, or it's not even been 24 hours, it's been like 12 hours really, but like in the last 12 hours that know about Sasser, that a lot of people are saying this is the kind of guy that you put next to Killian Hayes off the bench. However, it could mean the end of Killian Hayes off the bench completely. Maybe they want to run Sasser as a full-time point guard. Now, I heard that he's not a guy you want running full-time point guard. He's a guy that you want guarding ones and then playing off ball on offense. A guy who can soak up some, some possessions offensively, but... Overall, with getting a SAR and with getting Sasser, this is what you're looking at as the Pistons rotation and roster right now. So at point guard, you got Cade, Killian, and Sasser, Ivy, Burks, and Hampton at shooting guard, Boyan, Asar, and Eugene at small forward, Stu, Bagley, Livers, I guess, if you want to include Livers as a power forward, but he's kind of like a 3 4 at power forward, and then Dern and Wiseman at center. They still have. I think projected around $30 million in cap space. And they've been linked. I know in the last few hours, actually, right before I recorded the podcast, they were linked to being interested in DeAndre Hunter, who's a guy that can play the three and four for the Pistons. Um, I'm definitely, I'm a hundred percent sure they're going to want to address the three and four position still on this team in free agency. But this is the numbers are starting with the draft and with trading up for another guard. You're starting to run into a numbers crunch. And they they ended up, what made it even more of a numbers crunch is that they did this slight move up. They only moved up six picks, but they did this slight move up without giving up any player. So they're already sitting at, what is this, three, six, nine, 12, 14 guys. They're already sitting on 14 guys right now. Now, Eugene's probably not coming back. Hampton's not coming back. Um, so those are two guys that are probably going to decline their options. They're not going to be on the team. So that's two extra guys. But those guys are in the rotation anyway, so they're not really affecting this. So without giving up any guys, you got another pick in the draft. What's what's happening then? Because they're definitely going to spend some money in free agency or trade for somebody and absorb a bigger contract coming back. One of those two things are happening. So who's out? Who's out? So if they, the thing is, if they think, if, if Sasser is a Killian replacement, then Killian's the one out the door. K, uh, Sasser is to back up the Cade. Burks backs up Ivy. Asar will back up Boyan. Um... I, I guess they maybe they start Stu and Bagley's the backup and then Duran Wiseman. Maybe that's what they do. Maybe they trade. the the What I think still is the most likely thing is, and Killian may be traded anyways. He may be gone anyways. But what I think is likely going to happen is that I still believe they're probably going to move Burks or Bojan in a package to get a starting four. Because I don't think they, they're going to start with Stu at four. I think Stu will be the backup for. I think Bagley is either going to be out the rotation or traded because of his contract. And then Stu will be the backup for with Wiseman and uh, either Asar or Livers at the three. And then maybe Sasser at two and then Killian at point guard. But I think their their biggest their biggest need right now is the backup or is the starting four position. I just don't know how they do that without like a major, you know, numbers crunch with the roster. Because they, like I said, they made this trade for an extra pick without giving up somebody. So it low key makes me feel like that if they do go after Cam Johnson, you'll see a a, a sign in trade happen that includes some guys. Maybe they offer the bag at him and then agree to a sign in trade. Uh, maybe they don't get a free agent; they just absorb a big contract and swap contracts with like a Bagley, uh, 
Burks who's on team option or maybe a Bagley and Killian or maybe a Bagley and Livers. Like, maybe something like that. So, it's going to be interesting. I, I'm, I'm more interested in not who they're going to sign a free agency, not who they're going to trade for, but who who's out. Who's out of this roster? Who's out in this rotation? Because right now there's just two. There's not enough numbers for everybody. And we didn't even bring up Diallo, so I'm assuming Diallo's just gone too. Um, they're not bringing him back. It's I, I'm interested to see who's in and who's out. So we'll see. Probably over the next week or so, there might be a trade that happens before free agency. We'll definitely see once uh, July 1st rolls around and for free agency. So I don't know. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What do you guys think the drafting of Asar and Sasser? means for this roster and rotation who's going to be the odd man got odd guys out um what's the rotation going to look like who can they go after to fit with this roster now let me know all that in the comment section down below or over on twitter at kooka hill when we come back i just want to give my overall draft reactions to last night i thought it was a fun draft um some interesting things happened so i just want to give my overall draft reactions i'd love to hear from you guys what your guys' biggest draft reactions were um when we come back but first I've got to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and the best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you'll have. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The Game Time Guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section or row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps, and you're set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through your email. I know all of us have like 400 plus emails in, on their phone. I know I have right now 447 emails. I don't want to have to go through those to try to find my tickets. Well, with Game Time, you don't have to worry about it. It gets sent directly to your phone so you're all set. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKDOWNNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKDOWNNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. But now I got to tell you guys. About another one of our sponsors, Prize Picks. Okay, let's go ahead and assume that the NBA and NFL was still going on, and you were looking for the best daily fantasy option out there. Well, one, Prize Picks would be that option for you, the best daily fantasy option possible. But also, the thing about Prize Picks that's so much fun is that Prize Picks allows you to do cross sport entry. So you can take the over on, like, if the NFL NBA season was going on, you could take the over on a Jared Goss passing yard, you could take the over on um, Amon Ra St. Brown catches and then also take the over on Cage points. You can take the over on Jane Ivy's assists. You can take the over on Asar Thompson steals next year. And you can put them in the exact same entry with price picks. You simply pick two to six players to see if they score more or less than their price picks projection. You win up 25 times your money on any entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Price picks offers projection on any sport that you watch. When I say any sport, I quite literally mean it. Any sport that you think of, it will be on price picks. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's just that easy. Safe and fast withdrawals currently operational over 30 states and Canada. Download the price picks app. Go to pricepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports today. First time users can receive 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, price picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, price picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on and sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100 with prize picks. So, I want to thank you guys again for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons, hit that subscribe button, or leave us a five star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. I want to say one more time how. How insanely excited and happy I am that the Pistons selected Asar Thompson. The Thompson Twins were some of the most fun I've had watching prospects. Going back to last, last year was my first year really trying to get into prospects. This year I got even deeper into uh, scouting prospects. They were the most fun I had watching guys. High character guys. If you guys watching the interviews, I believe I saw they're actually going to be on Good Morning America. That might be happening while I'm recording this right now. But they were on, um, I believe they were on, ABC, 
that, actually, Good Morning America, that might have been the interview I just watched on ABC. I don't know. But I know they had an interview right after the draft, too. Um, if you haven't watched any of their past interviews before the draft, go, and not dumb, because I, I meant it's not a piston, but Asar. Asar, high character guy, great person, great personality, hard worker, hard work ethic, extremely confident, um, not to the point of cockiness, but very confident and humble. Just a great, great dude, a great player, a great person, um, and definitely fits exactly what Troy Weaver talks about when he says we draft people over players. This guy fits into the locker room. He's going to be a high character guy, and I think he's going to be absolutely great for the Pistons. I, I, I think the ceiling's through the roof with this guy, man. I, I, I think he's going to do great things for the Pistons. I can't wait. The Pistons' four core guys of Cade, Ivy, Asar, and Duran. I like. I'm through the roof with that, man. I, I, I'm so excited about those guys, man. I, I can't wait for the season now. The season just ended. But I can't wait for the season now. I like. It's crazy. It's crazy. But, all right, so moving away a little bit from the Pistons, it's still going to be about the Pistons, but moving away from, a little bit from the Pistons, some draft reactions last night. First thing I think my one of the biggest reactions I'm going to have, I think it's going to be the same as you guys, is just how far Cam Whitmore fell. Now, Cam Whitmore is a guy that a lot of you guys wanted at five. A lot of you guys wanted at five. And he ended up falling all the way to 20 to the Houston Rockets. So I can say this right now to you guys. I wasn't able to say it over the last week, but Woj reported that he was not interviewing well, Cam Whitmore. He didn't interview well, and he didn't work out well, and also there was some medical stuff that happened too. So all that combines why he fell. Over the last week or so, I also had been hearing that he was not interviewing very well at all and that he was not working out very well at all. Um, I want I want to emphasize the interviewing part. I heard that he was not interviewing it well at all, and that's why I didn't believe the Pistons were going to select him. I did not expect him to fall to 20. 20, I, I thought maybe he'd fall to the back end of the lottery, but completely out the lottery and almost out the top 20. I didn't see that happening with Cam Whitmore. I, like, I didn't think it would happen, he would fall that bad. So um, that was by far my biggest reaction. Out, like, out, obviously not Pistons related, but outside the Pistons, that was crazy. Um, and of course, Houston gets him. I think Houston, if everything's okay with Cam and he, you know, all the other concerns were are nothing. If he comes through, the Rockets might have just got like two top what university uh, universally decided like top eight talents in this draft at least. Some would say higher, but I think the lowest I saw Cam going was like eight. So two top top eight guys without getting anything in the draft or without giving up anything in the draft. That was a good haul for the Rockets. Um, now there a quick reaction. Portland didn't trade. Charlotte didn't trade. We didn't get as many trades as we thought were going to happen on draft night, involving players at least. Uh, we did get a lot of you know swaps with with picks, but not as many player trades as I thought we were going to get. I thought maybe we might see some stuff go off tonight. We didn't get any, or last night. We didn't see much. So Hornets went with Brandon Miller and Blazers got Scoot. Now I'm interested to see what happens with Dame. That's going to be interesting. Um, but really, that, that's about it with me. Um, I'm also... I guess my final Pistons reaction was I'm shocked at the Pistons. I was low-key shocked the Pistons moved up from 31 to 25 because with the way the draft was going, I thought they were going to be able to get a good prospect at 31 uh, because got, some guys were sliding. But obviously they really liked Sasser and they wanted to make sure they moved up and got him. Um, so can't hate on that. Um, I'm interested to see how Sasser plays in some league and what they want to do with him. But, man, we'll wrap up the podcast with this. Asar Thompson, it's a Detroit Piston. I'm extremely excited. That's my guy. He's been my guy for a few weeks now. Can't wait to see him play in the summer league. I, I, I just can't wait. This The Pistons team is looking up. They Remember just a few years ago, the Pistons didn't have any type of athleticism, for real. And I was on here begging, begging for some athleticism on the wing. I had a tweet that was going that, that Pistons Twitter was bringing up from like two, three years ago when I was begging for a wing with some type of athleticism. Begging. With a long wingspan, with athleticism that could switch on defense, begging for it, and now they got it in Asar Thompson. I I can't wait to watch these guys, man. So that's all I've got for you guys today, though. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are after draft night in the comment section down below or over on Twitter at Cuckoo Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Lockdown Pistons first listen of every single day. Hit that subscribe button at the YouTube channel. Leave us a five star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. Asar Thompson, you are a Detroit Piston. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until next time, peace out.